Well, ladies, I can't believe it, but it's day 10 of the Morning Miracles Challenge, and today you're just asked to reflect on what was most powerful for you in this challenge and how you may have improved in your morning routine, your God-focused morning routine this month. Every month after the 10 days, all the team leaders get together to discuss how it went, how we can improve, how we can make this challenge um, more effective for you in getting that time with the Lord in the morning. I hope that the things I pulled from Priscilla Shire's Discerning the Voice of God Bible Study helped you to take it to the next level this month. And there's one more thing I want to share with you from that Bible study. It's the five M's of correctly hearing God. Page 55. But before I do, before I dig in, I want to just say a word of encouragement to those of you who may not feel like you were successful in this month's challenge, or maybe you dropped out at some point, or maybe before getting this information I'm about to give you, you're sensing that you still aren't sure how you can actually hear from God in your day-to-day life. That word of encouragement is simply this, wait upon the Lord. Major life changes, like putting God first thing in the morning and starting a new routine, do not happen in 10 days. It's our prayer that this gave you a good springboard for that change. But if you tripped up, slipped and fell, or found yourself not able to put into it the effort that you wanted to, then I want to encourage you to give yourself some grace, make provision for yourself for that, you know, margin of error, that humanness inside of you, the flesh that you're fighting against. Each month is different, and I've seen this in myself too. Some months come easier, some come harder. I'm going to give you some verses. Isaiah 40, 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That verse is talking about you. If you decide to have the attitude of waiting on the Lord for this change that you want in your life. If you're going to try to force it, you're not going to be able to enjoy this renewed strength. The sense of soaring above the difficulties. This promise of walking and not fainting, not growing weary, is to those who wait on the Lord. Lamentations 3.25 The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Isaiah 30, verse 18. Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Psalm 130, verses 5 through 6. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. Are you seeing a pattern here? There are so many good verses, but there is blessing in the waiting. Okay, one more. Psalm 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And now you are ready for the five M's of correctly hearing God. The first one is look for the message of the Spirit. M is for message. It says, intentionally listen, be still, and consciously turn your attention inward to see if what you're sensing carries the weight of God or is simply the fleeting, unsteady voice of your own emotions. Don't just casually ask God for guidance. Discernment like this takes time and patience and practice. Number two, live in the mode of prayer. M is for mode. Don't talk to others about anything more than you talk to God about it. Submit anything you think you're hearing from him back to him in prayer. When the issue comes to your mind throughout the day, don't waste time worrying. Instead, spend your time handing the issue over to God. Number three, search out the model of scripture. M is for model. Carefully consider what the Bible says. Dig into the word and find out. 
Does what you think you're hearing contradict the character of God or his word in any way? If it does, guess what? You're not hearing God correctly. I love this next one, number four. Submit to the ministry of Eli. That's M for ministry. Just as the as this priest of Israel provided young Samuel with insight as to how to recognize the voice of God in 1 Samuel 3, seek the counsel of a wise, more mature believer who is practiced in discerning God's voice in his or her own life. And the fifth M of correctly hearing God is to expect the mercy of confirmation. M is for mercy. Ask the Lord to confirm his internal word with external evidence. He desires for you to know his will. He's not hiding it from you. He will graciously verify his message through his word, through circumstances, or even through another person. Those were the five M's of correctly hearing God. And in my opinion, the diamond of the discerning the voice of God Bible study, I found them to be so true and a really very handy for a, a place to return to anytime I feel that I need to know whether something is really from God, which is a lot. <laughs> it's been a real pleasure to walk alongside you these 10 days in the discerning the voice of God version of the Morning Miracles Challenge. February is a beautiful month. We think about God's love and how much better and purer it is than any worldly love we could ever achieve. And we're reminded that communing with him is 100% worth the effort every single time. I can't wait to read your testimonies of how this month has made a difference for you in the group. So I'm going to go over there now and it's time for me to say goodbye. So this is Laura Gabriel signing off.